What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another video and welcome back to the channel. We are back with another NHL pre season preview episode and in this one today we're going to be going ahead and covering, taking a look at our first Eastern Conference team, the Columbus Blue Jackets, how they finished last year as well as take a look at their team stats, team contracts and predict and talk about what I think that they will do this upcoming season. But if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are growing like crazy and I can't thank you guys enough for the love and support and again it is completely free doesn't cost you a thing doesn't hurt you in any way shape or form so hit that subscribe button tell five friends to hit that subscribe button we're trying to grow the channel to about 750 subscribers by the fall time but without further ado getting into it here with the columbus blue jackets and man oh man it was a rough season for them last year they finished off 25 48 and 9 for a total of 59 points not very good at all, bottom of the Metropolitan Division and actually bottom of the Eastern Conference for last season. Looking at their team stats, at least in their top 10, there is a lot of minus players on this team. Johnny Gaudreau leading the team with points, 74 in 80 games played. And honestly, not too shabby, Patrick Laine only played 55 games. He had 52 points. Honestly, for him, solid season. Boone Jenner. Decent season, 45 points in only 68 games played. Jack Roslovic, 44 and 77. Ken Johnson, uh, his first full year in the NHL, 40 points in 79 games played. Karel Marchenko had 25 in 59 played. And then so on and so forth. Eric Robinson, Rogvist, Nyquist, and uh, Benstrom all rounding out the top 10. Getting into their contracts now. You can't really see it on their screen right now at this moment, but they've got three players currently on their injured reserve, which totals a total of about $12.8 million worth of cap on their long-term injured reserve. Per cap friendly right now, they also have about four point seven million worth of open cap at this point in time, which they will probably have to make a move around once... Uh, those players off injured reserve, most notably Zach Wierenski, who's on a $9.58 million deal for the next five seasons when he gets back to full health, as well as Jake Bean. And when they both get back to full health, they'll need to have a little bit of cap gym gymnastics uh, when it comes to moving some things around. But you've got some top, honestly, really good players on their team, most notably Johnny Gaudreau, who's making 9.75 until 2028. Patrick Laine, 8.7 for the next three seasons. Ross Levick is on a contract year at $4 million. An Ohio native trying to prove something, trying to get something done at 26 years old. He's playing for another contract in the NHL. Uh, Alexander Texier um, is a contract year restricted free agent. Eric Robinson as well. And then down below, you will have Kent Johnson on a contract year, Karel Marchenko, Brenstrom, and Liam Foody. And most notably, I'd say their biggest acquisition uh, for this upcoming season via the draft, Adam Fantilli out of the University of Michigan in Canada. As a country, this kid is going to be electric. Another Michigan guy getting in there with Kent Johnson, University of Michigan, not a Michigan native. But should be really interesting to see what he does this upcoming season with the team. Again, I, I still think they're going to struggle, but it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what he can do, whether they play him with Johnny Gaudreau, Patrick Laine, Jack Roslovic, Boone Jenner, Sean Corrali, if they stick him with Johnson for that Michigan, University of Michigan um, chemistry. Who knows what they're going to do with him, but the sky is the limit for this kid. Is he, The skill is there, the size is there, the hockey sense, the shot. It's, it's all there. It's just a matter of seeing what he can do on the big stage. On the back end, Severson, I know they picked him up this offseason. Uh, he is signed through the 2030 season at $6.25 million, which I think is a very good deal. Uh, they got Provorov in a trade as well. He's locked up for the next two years. Uh, Gabranson locked up for the next three years at $4 million. Uh, Piki locked up for the next three years at $2.75. Bogvist locked up for the next two years. Blankenberg for the next year. And then Barini, uh, I don't, can't really pronounce his name. They haven't figured out his contract. And then between the pipes, Merz Lincolns and Tarasov should be interesting there to see how that tandem works out. But overall, on the back end and their goaltending, I think those are probably their biggest holes. Even with Wierenski back and Jake Bean back, I still think it's not a incredibly deep defensive core. But 
if if obviously Rowenski Rowenski comes back uh, fully healthy and contributing the way we know he can before his injury, it could change some things. But the goaltending, Mers Lincoln's obviously solid goaltender, not super proven yet. I don't think here in the NHL uh, as a whole. Uh, but I do think that the the future is bright for the Columbus Blue Jackets as a whole. Again, with Goudreau, only 30 years old. Patrick Laine, only 25. Ross Levick, only 26. And then Fantilli, 18. Ken Johnson, 20. Marchenko is 23. Foodie, 23. So, again, the future is definitely bright. Getting into, I guess, my official prediction at this point in time, I expect them to be down below near the bottom of the Metropolitan Division again this year. Maybe they shock some people and are up there where the Capitals were last year, around that 80-point mark. But I realistically see them more around that 62 to maybe 70-point range this upcoming season, battling it out with the Flyers for, I'd say, the division worst or the worst team in the division uh, for sure. Again, super excited to see how Goudreau does this upcoming season. I'm going to be really interested to see how the team plays for Mike Babcock, him coming back into the league, if he's able to tap into some unforeseen potential that they have as a team that gets them sort of jump-started going in the right direction. Who knows if that's going to be the case? Does Patrick Laine have another solid season? How does Fantilli fit in with the NHL where his current skill set is? Can Johnson, Kirill Marchenko, can they find a good year on a contract year coming up and earn themselves maybe a bridge deal or a four- to five-year solid year deal? Because looking at their cap uh, for next season, they will have about $23.5 million. Uh, so the, there's definitely room to keep some pieces around depending on how guys do, if they want to keep them from their team or bring them in in free agency or via trade. Who knows, but... I do think it'll be a tough year for the Blue Jackets, but I think it'll be a fun and exciting one if you are a Blue Jackets fan for the future to look forward to some good times ahead, which I do think they that they are on the horizon, just not this upcoming season. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Who do you think the most breakout, the biggest breakout performer will be for the Columbus Blue Jackets? Who do you think is going to be the most underwhelming performer this year? I want your guys' X factors or anything else you want to talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like on it. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Again, it is completely free. It does not cost you a single thing. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Help grow the community and come join us. We are going to be talking hockey all season long. There's some promo codes down below in the description for you guys. SeatGeek and G Fuel. So be sure to go ahead and check those out. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.